Okay. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. So um, here we are once again, ready to get started. Sadly, it's not going to be the last class of the week, but you know, things happen and yeah, it means that we're going to have um, classes tomorrow as well, but I'm okay with that, you know? So yeah, hopefully you guys are doing amazing. You had an amazing day today and are also ready to get to work on, um, well, more of the of the language that we are trying to manage to learn here um so for this evening what do we have in storage a few things actually and uh, among those things well uh we need to continue talking about participles as adjectives which is um you know the um basically like the main thing that we were supposed to do yesterday so yeah we have that one um we also have a little bit of a practice regarding that topic specifically then a conversation this time around the way we're going to do it is that uh, we are actually going to um yeah i have the breakout rooms ready so uh we are going to be doing the conversation thing right after we are done with um with the conversation like after we read the conversation we're going to practice the conversation so that we're not you know skipping any um practice and we're not delaying any practice because at the end i have noticed that sometimes you know we have that um like not amount not enough amount of time so we kind of like get to skip conversations and what happened yesterday ends up happening that we have like a cumulus of uh, practice so tonight we're not going to let that happen now if we have time right after that, we are going to also talk about opinions. And uh, this is basically, um, well, it's kind of like a, a chart where we have a different adjectives, adjectives that we can use to express our opinion about something. Of course, I would like to get to hear more examples or more opinions coming from you, like more things that you will be able to describe with your own words. But that's going to be when we get there. and. Uh, the one that I don't necessarily, you know, consider that we're going to be able to do is talking about relative classes. Um, that's a topic that for many people is tricky because they don't necessarily get to understand how to use it or when to use it. But tonight we're going to try to simplify how to use relative classes. But well, for starters, um, it's a Thursday. We are supposed to wrap it up on Thursdays, but... You know, it's uh, mandatory that tomorrow we have a class. So tomorrow we're going to have a repo class, of course, under the same schedule. So, yeah, we're going to have basically two, two weeks when we're working from Tuesday to Friday and two weeks when we hopefully get to work from um, Monday to Thursday. But um, tomorrow we are actually going to be reaching, you know, the middle of this um, course. So I hope you guys have the chance to join and, you know, can be here with us to um, basically go ahead and do like the whole practice of the English language. For um, classes that are repo, most of the time, I'd like to do activities that are a little bit different. So maybe we can do some um, some reading or some different tasks that doesn't necessarily have to do with this, like with all the topics that we have to cover. So please keep that in mind because that's something that I like to do when we have those Friday classes, um, because I know that it's not official. So it's better like, you know, that we see the language from maybe a little bit of a different perspective. Um, but tonight, the question, I do have, as always, a question for you guys. And this evening, it's gonna be kind of easy, or I think it's easy. I want you guys to think about what has been the most interesting moment, moments that you have lived? You know, that experience, that moment in your life that you thought, oh, okay, now that's nice. You know, it's like a moment when maybe you were walking or at a museum, maybe um, driving a road that was new, and then you saw a landscape that basically amused you. So that moment, you know, one moment in your life where you have thought, wow, this is great. So something that has made you feel great um now just so you have some time to think i think that i will go ahead and share my moment and uh, it actually happened like five years ago um i don't want to sound like you know the regular cliche 
person that uh, yeah I have been to another country and yeah everything was the best in that country no I wanted you to know I want to give you a little bit of a background for my story and the thing is that since I was like 16 years old I just started like in baseball and uh, the reason why I sometimes like sports is because I see one team or I see something magical happen so for example I started watching American football one time when the Panthers won a Super Bowl and they were losing by, I think it was like by around 30 points. It was like 28 points. They were like 28 points behind and they ended up winning uh, that that game. So the same happened with the baseball thing. So one time I was watching the game. Uh, it was between the Cardinals and I think it was the Astros. I, I'm not sure, but it was the Cardinals, I'm sure. Uh, but the Cardinals were losing and they ended up winning and they also ended up becoming champions. So since that moment, I started to like Cardinals of St. Louis or St. Louis Cardinals. Um, so something that I never thought was going to happen. I never even considered that I was ever going to be to St. Louis when I was going on the internship because I didn't know if I was able to travel, you know, if I had known, maybe I would have imagined that maybe one day I was going to be able to go to St. Louis. But the thing is that um, as I was, you know, on the plane on my way to Minnesota from Texas to Minnesota, um, I was able to see like the map, like where I was going. So I saw that the plane was actually on top of St. Louis. Um, I didn't have a window, uh, a window seat. But one of my friends did. So I asked her if I was, you know, if I if I could like take a peek and see what was um through the window. And luckily I was able to see a ring. There is a ring or like a like an arch in St. Louis that is very distinctive. It is close to the stadium where the Cardinals play. And um I don't know. It was just something so great that it, it was kind of like magical because I remember that I was sleeping. I woke up. I look at the plane or at the at the map, and when I saw the map, I saw that I was, you know, going on top of St. Louis, and I asked to see through the window, and the first thing I saw was exactly that thing, a place where I have dreamt of being. I haven't been there yet, but I was basically on top of it, so it felt great. It felt, you know, like a, like a dream coming true, but it wasn't necessarily a dream, just something that was just amazing to live so yeah that's my thing you know uh being on top of the st louis arch or the st louis ring now how about you i want to hear from your experiences so in the case of edwin what has been a moment in your life edwin that has made you feel um amused um well uh i don't, I don't know i am um... And I, I don't go uh, out of, of, of my country. Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, only only here in country. But um, um, I like to go to, to the fields, nothing more. Um, um, I like play soccer. It's my favorite sport. Um, maybe um, I play basketball, but no more much. Mm -hmm. um, 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 I don't know. Um, Maybe um I go to to the to the beach with my family. Um, visit parent. Um. Uh, I like to watch, uh, TV. Um, uh, match soccer. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I don't like I don't like uh, the, uh, football americano. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't, don't, don't lie. Uh, I like so uh, basketball, the NBA, uh, Premier League, and uh, Spanish League, and 
in my free time and uh, I saw that as poor. Okay, great. So maybe, you know, moments that make you feel great or make you feel amazing about life are basically when you get the chance to enjoy a good game or when you get to um, enjoy going to the beach. I am assuming that's, you know, what, what we're going for here. So nice, you know, it's great to, to live things that we love and to enjoy the things that we love. Now, how about we hear from Rodrigo Mendoza? In your case, Rodrigo, what has been a moment in your life that has left you amused, that has uh, made you feel amazing about being alive? Yeah, good evening, teacher. Um, mm -hmm. In my case, I, I like the, the football soccer. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was a child, I remember um, when at the stadium to see the final match, uh, Fast Aila in 2003 years. And mm -hmm. I consider it a special moment and it's amazing to remember. Okay, great. Yeah, that's also one of the moments, or one of the examples that I will be able to give. You know, if I was like to talk about an experience here, here in the country, the first time that I entered at Guska, that was just great. I was yeah. like, I was like 14 or 15, I think. But um, yeah, I was passing through the door and seeing like all the people, like everything orange, because I am an Aguilucho. So seeing everything orange there was just amazing because it was an Aguila Metapan. So of course, you know, like Aguila had basically all the seats. Um, but yeah, it was an amazing moment. And I cannot even imagine how it will feel to see an Aguila fast. So, or, you know, any other team against fast. Because yeah, they are big, big um supporters here. So very good. Nice. Your moment sounds very legit and very um comparable, you know. So nice, very good. How about in the case of uh, Karen? How about you, Karen? What has been a moment in your life when you have felt um amused? Hello, good night, good night. everyone. Um well, I will say that I had the opportunity to work for Avianca for several years. So as an employee, mm -hmm. uh, we have like a standby ticket. So me and three friends traveled to Argentina at the end of the year to celebrate the end and the new year. Mm -hmm. So um, when we trying to come back, the plane was um overbooked so mm -hmm. we spend and um sleep like two nights at the airport um and um just trying to get some spaces to come back to uh, to el salvador mm -hmm. so finally we had the opportunity to talk with the uh, captain mm -hmm. uh, and ask her ask him uh, please help us to come back to El Salvador. And the great news it, it was that, that he was uh, Honduran. Oh, Honduran. Honduran. No, oh, Honduran. Okay. Yeah. And probably he saw our faces that we were just literally crying. So, um, well, when uh, all the people um, board the plane, so they told us that, yes, the captain said, yes, we can travel in the emergency seats. Mm -hmm. And two of us, we can travel with them in the cabin. So I had the opportunity to travel with one of my best friends in the cabin with the captain and the co-pilot and see the Andes mountain. So it was really, really beautiful. I can only imagine. Yes. Wow. Besides, of course, now uh, Argentina. That is a really, really beautiful country. I had the opportunity to travel to Argentina twice. Oh, great. Do you yeah. eat beef? Yeah. The first time we <laughs> eat in a really, really um, great restaurant. Uh -huh. Expensive, of course. But it was, yes, the, the best uh, meat that I have ever uh -huh. eaten. 
So yeah. there are, yes, really, really uh, great places. I have visited different countries, but I think that experience, it was amazing just to see the, the Andes, yes. Uh -huh. Great, mm -hmm. so amazing, amazing. Yeah, I mean, I that, that sounds great, you know, like going on top of the and this. So yeah, and I ask you if you eat meat because many people nowadays, you know, people just don't uh eat meat anymore. Uh, but going to Argentina, I think it's basically something you have to try. It's a you must. Know? Yeah, it's yeah. A must. you have. Yes, to, it's a must. You have to go and have an asado. So yeah, it's of course yeah. part of the. But there are different kind of meats. There are some meats that definitely are just grossed. Something <laughs> that is that like a sausage black that I'm not. Uh, I don't know what it is. I think it's from the pig, but it's something mm -hmm. just terrible. Yes. Is it like more probably like a morcilla, maybe? Yes, that is. Yes. Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Morcilla. Yeah, so, a morcilla. It's I didn't yeah, like it's pig blood basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I so. tried the choripan in uh -huh. the street, but I didn't like it. Oh, sad. I was I was actually looking at a video last night about uh, an Argentinian restaurant that is opening, uh, or I think it's already opened. I don't know. The thing is that they have like a like a special uh, for this Saturday, and uh, for fifteen dollars you can go ahead and try like you know different meats that they're gonna be serving. I don't remember the name of the restaurant, but it was it was here in El Salvador. So yeah, I, I would like to. Salvador. Uh huh. I would like to do that because. I mean, I have only heard, I actually have never had Argentinian um, um, asado, but they say that is basically the best, you know, uh, meat. So, yeah, I would love to to try it. Uh, but yeah, Argentina, I it, it is on my wish list. It is on my wish yeah, list. You go. You yeah, you should go. Yeah. Ahora, le voy a decir algo en español que le juro que a mí me da risa porque en serio, eh, eso me ha pasado toda la vida y yo no sé por qué a mí me pasa que casi siempre con las historias que la gente cuenta yo tengo algo que se parece so, en mi caso me pasó algo similar pero no necesariamente igual igual sino que fue el día que estábamos regresando de Estados Unidos con mis amigos cuando estábamos en eso de la pasantía eh, pues nosotros no decidíamos nuestro pueblo, ¿verdad? los pagaba la, la, la gente que nos llevó y todo entonces eh, al regreso el vuelo de conexión entre Minnesota y Texas se retrasó y llegamos tarde al vuelo que venía desde Texas para El Salvador. Yeah. Entonces, cuando llegamos, supuestamente llegábamos a tiempo, pero nos dijeron que ya no. Pero lo difícil de eso era que pues, el vuelo de Texas a El Salvador es bien corto, ¿verdad? Entonces las familias casi todas ya estaban en el aeropuerto. Bueno, mi familia estaba en Olocuilta, pero ajá, ya estaban cerca. Entonces, eh, y fue bien difícil porque nos dijeron que el siguiente vuelo salía a las... 10 de la noche, para eso, 9 y algo más o menos, pero estaba lleno. Entonces, y nos acercamos a, a, a la ventanilla y nos dijeron que no. Y luego, o sea, nos quedamos ahí tirados, ¿verdad? Porque nos dijeron, nos vamos al hotel, no sé qué, no sé cuánto. Ah, pues entonces, pero al rato una señora se nos acercó, que era con United el, el vuelo, se nos acercó y nos preguntó que si, que si dónde éramos y ya le dijimos que de acá a El Salvador y así. Entonces nos preguntó que si encantábamos y le contamos, ¿verdad? Que era una pasantía y que éramos todos estudiantes universitarios y no sé qué. Entonces, y ella nos dijo, ¿saben qué, Cipote? Y así, lo voy a mandar, dijo, vayan a comer pupusas ya. Entonces, ella también era salvadoreña. Por eso fue que yo le dije que quizá era salvadoreño también el piloto. Porque la señora, ella sí era salvadoreña. Ella dijo, ¿saben qué, Cipote? Lo voy a mandar. Aunque sea parados que se vayan. Y yo, sí. <risa> y Pero, se vino el mismo día. El mismo día, solo que venimos a medianoche. O sea, ya cuando, cuando salí donde estaba mi familia esperándome, eran como a las 12.40 más o menos. O sea que la casa aquí... United, bueno, antes daba buenas compensaciones, no sé si le dieron a usted. Nada, no, esa vez no nos dieron nada. O sea, supuestamente lo que iban a hacer es que nos iban a dar 200 hotel. dólares y el hotel, uh -huh. supuestamente. Pero pues, uh -huh. ajá, preferíamos estar aquí ya, la verdad. Porque había sido un año fuera de la casa, o sea, ahí fue como que, pues sí. ¿Un año? Sí. O sea que es como los, nos llevaron allá para trabajar todo un año, entonces... Era como que, ajá, ya era bastante tiempo. Así y, que... y trabajó de profesor, o sea, ah, sí. algo de la carrera o... Profesor de kinder, en mi caso, bueno, nos asignan a cada uno un grado. El mío fue el más bajito, yo quedé con niños de kinder, porque decían que yo era el único que era bueno con los niños, así que, ajá. Este, la ¿Y mayoría... was English, Spanish? 
So you were Spanish. teaching in Spanish? No, I was teaching Spanish, yes. It was uh -huh. a Spanish immersion school. The first day, it was it was just so sad because many of the kids, they were American, of course. Um, so they didn't know Spanish, like, at all. They probably only knew how to say hola, maybe. Uh, but, you know, having all those kids entering the room and we, the teachers, me and a Colombian teacher, um, greeting them and telling them, hola, buenos días, bienvenidos, esta es su clase, somos su, sus nuevos maestros and all that they were overwhelmed. So they started crying, most of them, because really? they didn't know Spanish at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I broke the rules because I wasn't supposed to speak any English to them. They were supposed to think that we didn't know any English um, because that's the idea. You know, the parents already know that. Like, it's a, an agreement. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're being mean on it or anything. Parents already know that, you know, the kids might uh, want to quit on the first two weeks. But none of them did. Like all the kids that started my course, at least, they all um, thrived and they all basically finished. Um, up to what I knew, they all studied at the same school up to fourth grade. Because up to uh, when they finish the fifth grade, they'll go to different uh, middle schools. There are basically no um, immersion schools at the middle level. But still, all the kids, you know, that were in my class, at least, they got to fifth grade uh, on the immersion school, but mm -hmm. it's very hard for them at the beginning because, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, they, 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 they don't know Spanish, most of them. Mm -hmm. I think I only had like five Latinos. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. But at the end of the of the whole year, it was funny how to um, how the American kids were doing better at reading in Spanish than the Latino kids really yeah at the end of the year that was a surprise for us because we expected you know they are latino so they're gonna know their words better you know they're gonna learn their words better but no the american kids were doing way better than latinos um there was one girl who was actually from two mexican parents and she was basically the worst at reading i mean she was good at speaking of course mm -hmm. uh, but at reading she did very bad um, so yeah, that was the one that I had to work the most with on the last two weeks. And, uh, at the end she kind of caught up, but yeah, it's, it was quite an experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was quite an experience. And basically that's the reason why I became a teacher because before that I didn't want to, to teach at all. Mm. But yeah. yeah. But I think they, uh, all of them in the United States, uh, learn Spanish because my boss can read it. She mm -hmm. said. That sometimes he she understands us, but uh, she cannot speak Spanish, mm -hmm. but she can read it. Yeah, in the middle, mm -hmm. like on the on the on the south. Um, well, no, it's like like mid north United States, where like Minnesota and the Dakotas are. Those three states are basically the ones that are working the hardest because um, mm -hmm. from here from El Salvador, we were actually eighty three interns that year, and for those eighty three interns. 69 were in Minnesota. The rest were some in South Dakota. There was only two in in, in Washington, in Seattle, and there was one in Chicago or in, in Illinois. Uh, but yeah, the rest were all in Minnesota. So Minnesota had basically the most, you know, interns. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, from the whole Latino um, community, Minnesota had like 600. Um, interns because there were interns from Colombia, from Chile, from Argentina, Spain, and uh, what else? No Mexicans. There were no Mexicans. I think there were some Guatemalans as well. But yeah, it was a it is a huge program. Like you know, they're really yeah. working on making um those middle states into Spanish. However, the sad part is that there are not many um like Latinos there. There are more, mm -hmm. way more Asians than Latinos, but you know that works because yeah, they are bringing a lot of help, and that's why mm -hmm. every year, for example, this year one of my ex students, he is working on a school that is like uh, five minutes away from the school that I was working um, five years ago. So, it's great. Okay, great experience. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, was, mm -hmm. it was very nice. Yeah, I remember that uh, when I started filling all the documents. I wasn't convinced because I thought that I was not going to get the chance. Um, I knew of my capabilities, but I was afraid that my family record, you know, having like uh, 15 family members living in the States was not going to let me. 
Mm-hmm. But at the end, that didn't affect, and I got the visa. Um, so yeah, it was cool. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and work into this already. And as I was saying last night, we are going to be using some of the participles because it's not gonna be every single verb in participle form that we can use as a as an adjective. Um, uh, but the way this works as I was explaining last night before we finished the class, is that when you use the present participle form of the verb, it is basically like a, like an explosive feeling, you know, like the, the reaction that um, something pro, um, creates in you, like how something makes you feel at that moment. And this one, the one that um, uses the participle form, but in the past, past participle form, is normally going to be used to talk about the stored feeling. Sorry, the feeling that you get, but that it is basically like safe in, in, in inside you. Um, so like, for example, if I feel like a movie um, is exciting on first sight, the first time that I watch it, it's not the same as saying I get excited uh, when I watch the movie or this movie because it's something that I already know. It's something that I, that is um, is and will still be saved inside me, something that continues to make me feel like that. Um, the same as, for example, when you say uh, that going on or running a marathon is tiring. So that's the, the momentary reaction. So running a marathon is tiring. Yes, at the moment that you're running the marathon, you are um you know feeling that it is it is tiring but when you finish running the marathon the way you're gonna feel is that you're gonna feel tired okay so you're gonna feel tired and that means that it is an adjective many people confuse it because yes they are verbs and of course we can use them as verbs but many of these ones are normally only recognized because they are used also as adjectives now here uh Last night, I read only one of the examples. So the second example that we have is the last James Bond film was boring. So this is something that, you know, people experience, people may express right after they watch the movie. So they feel like it was boring. It's something that doesn't produce any joy on the uh, exact moment that you're watching it or while you're watching it. However, um, this other example, when we have it in past participle, and we say, I was bored by the last James Bond film. It means that it's something um, that, you know, you're sharing maybe a week later, a month later, or years later. So it's something that is still with you. Like you still feel bored about the fact that you watched the movie. It's like something that you will not like to try again. So it is the feeling that you saved inside you. It's the feeling that you keep with you after you have experienced that thing. So. In the moment, is with ing. After the fact, it is supposed to be in uh, ed. They sell it as ed, but please remember that when we talk about participles or past participles, not every verb is going to finish in on ed. There are, of course, the irregular verbs that can also be used as um, as adjectives, but they do not necessarily finish in ed. Now. It is important to clarify, most of the verbs that we use to talk about um, feelings or to, to use them as adjectives are going to be um, regular verbs. That is something that we need to remember because there are very little irregular verbs that can be used as participles or I mean as, as adjectives. The rest of them and also something that is important to remember as well is the fact that we need to um, use or the, the, the verbs that we use as adjectives are verbs that express some kind of emotion, some kind of feeling. We cannot use, for example, the verb cut. That's an action. That is completely an action. However, fascinate is something that creates some sort of emotion. So it fascinates the kids. You know, the way um, the clown is doing the show fascinates the kids. That is an action. When you use it as that, it's an action. But um, if you say, for example, the way the clown is doing the show is fascinating. That is an adjective. So when you say, for example, um, wait, 
Um, how can we use fascinating as a verb? No, I think it's impossible. Yeah, I think it's impossible to use fascinating as a verb like like that uh, when we have it as ing form. So fascinating. Um, yeah, it's basically impossible to use it as a verb because all the examples that come to my mind are only when you use it as an adjective. Because if you say, for example, the fascinating world of uh, that is an adjective or yes, I think the only way in which you can use it is when you use it as the with a third person. And of course, when you use it in uh, the first person. But the important thing here is that what you need to remember is that the verbs that you're going to use as adjectives are verbs that can express some sort of feeling. It's not like every single verb. For example, run cannot be used as an adjective. They can be used, yes, as um adjectives but to describe things okay they can be used as as adjectives to describe things for example if you talk about running shoes that in that case the um the before verb run doesn't necessarily work as a verb is going to serve as an adjective because it is describing the purpose of those shoes so maybe the example the full example can be have you seen my running shoes so there you're using it only to describe what shoes you're looking for. It's not, um, I don't know, your dancing shoes. It's not your swimming shoes. It's your running shoes. So for those occasions, you can use some verbs as adjectives, but it's because you're describing things. But when you're using it uh, or using them uh, to describe some sort of emotion or when you want to also use, for example, the same verb, in the in the past participle perform to talk about the remnants or you know the further result of this action you can or you have to try to find verbs that are about emotions because you cannot say for example the run shoes no that's that doesn't work so there you need to have some sort of action some sort of oh, sorry some sort of emotion to um to make that verb actually work as an adjective. Así que, importantísimo, ¿verdad? Para simplificarlo, los verbos que se pueden utilizar como adjetivos en ambos casos, en presente participio y en pasado participio, son verbos que se refieren a emociones, ¿sí? Ahora, otros verbos que se pueden utilizar para poder eh, describir cosas, o sea, utilizarlos como adjetivos, son verbos que se utilizan para describir objetos. Por ejemplo, ustedes pueden decir running shoes para hablar acerca de los zapatos para correr. Pueden decir dancing shoes para hablar acerca de los zapatos para bailar. Pero no pueden utilizar ese verbo también en pasado para utilizarlo como adjetivo. No va a funcionar. Ahora, otra cosa bien importante es que, por ejemplo, cuando yo digo que algo es tiring, que esa es como que la, la palabra que más, en la que más eh, hago énfasis porque creo que es la que más nos confunde, cuando digo que algo es tiring, ¿sí? es algo que me hace sentir cansado. O sea, yo digo, por ejemplo, es cansador caminar 20, 20 minutos. ¿sí? So that's tiring. It's tiring to walk for 20 minutes. Just as an example, because I walk more and I don't feel tired. But the thing is that, um, yeah. Pero si, por ejemplo, al final de un día en el que ustedes tuvieron que caminar 20 kilómetros, Ustedes se sienten cansados, ahí no se utilizaría ya el tiring, sino que ya decimos, I feel tired. ¿sí? After walking 20K, I feel tired. Or I'm tired because I had to walk um, for 20, ki 20 kilometers. So that is how you're going to use uh, these two things. So when you are living the moment, when you're doing the action, performing the action, you're going to use it in ING. But after the fact, when you have already experienced the thing, that's when you use it in the ED form. Y la otra cosa que les decía, la mayoría de verbos que se utilizan para expresar sentimientos en inglés son verbos regulares. Por eso es que en el video y en muchas otras explicaciones les van a decir que los verbos que ustedes pueden utilizar como en el pasado participio son verbos en ED. ¿sí? Porque difícilmente nos vamos a encontrar un verbo que se refiera a un sentimiento o a un estado de ánimo ya sea un verbo irregular. La mayoría de los verbos que se refieren a sentimientos o estados de ánimo 
son verbos regulares. Por lo tanto, al ser verbos regulares, van a terminar en ed. So yeah, that's something that we need to, um, you know, like check it there to have it stored. Now, the last example. The new Halliburry movie sounds interesting. I'm interested in the new Halliburry movie. So this is, uh, you know, something that I, I heard. It sounds interesting. It's not that I have experienced it. So you use the word sounds because it's something that you imagine, you know, that, um, yeah, it might be like that. Now, if you say, I'm interested in the new Halliburry movie, it's because you are sure that you're interested. It's because you're sure that you want to know more about the movie. So I'm interested is like you're saying um, that you actually want to watch this movie. So there is a difference. When you say sounds interesting, you don't know. You haven't even experienced the thing. It's simply an idea that you heard or maybe an idea that you created by, um, I don't know, by a review or a comment that you heard from someone else. However, when you say I'm interested is because maybe you have watched movies from this person before and now you want to see her work in the new movie or you want to see how she does in the new movie. So yeah, that will be how we are going to be using this um, participle forms of uh, verbs as adjectives. Now, would you guys happen to have a question regarding this topic? Okay, seems like no then. Um, so we have here um, a little practice. So we have four, no, it's six verbs. Yeah, six verbs and six blank spaces. So the verbs are on the base form. So it means that we can use them as we please or as you guys please. So, um, you know, it's like you can, of course, use, e e e e sorry, one moment. So you can use any of these verbs in the ing or the ed form. It depends on you. Now, the verbs that we have are amaze, annoy, confuse, disgust, embarrass, and shock. So now I ask you to help me fill this up and uh, see what are the proper answers for um sec for these blank spaces. So we have the first time. I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost ten dollars. I was really what would be the best verb to fill up this blank. Do you think annoy could be okay. disgusting? Mm, probably shock. We're gonna try with shock. Vamos a ver después si no nos arrepentimos. Shocked. Okay, shocked. Sí. Ahí yo me equivoqué porque se lo di de una vez. Tenía que haberlo dejado solo en shock y ver si si se daban cuenta del error. Bueno, pero igual. So yeah, I was really shocked by the price. By mistake. I gave the cashier a $5 bill instead of a 10. I was a little, what would be the one here? Disgust. Okay. I was a little I disgust. Disgust. Okay. Like that, or should we add something at the end? Solo disgust, or deberíamos agregar algo al final? I think uh, past form because then okay. I was... Uh, okay, I was disgusted. Oh, sorry, I was disgusted. All right, uh, we'll see later on how that. Come on, man, how that turns out. Uh, now the next one is the uh, then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was. ¿Qué podríamos decir acerca del desorden que había en el en el teatro? Embarrass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or the mess was. People behind me talk during the movie. Okay. Which was confused. So now we continue. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was. Oh, do I don't remember what is the Why? meaning of annoy or annoy. Uh, annoy is molesto. Oh. Uh -huh. Annoy is molesto. 
¿Cómo podríamos conjugarlo entonces? Si fuese a Noé. But in this space, I is not the, the answer. I think in this space is confused. Okay. I'm gonna see about that. Okay, so Which confused. Was, confused. Was confused or confusing? Okay, we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna come back to that, I am sure. How about this over here? Um, the story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too. To what? What do you think? I always find thrillers too... Annoying. Annoying? Okay. I like the special effects too. They were amazing. Okay. Nice. So we have the last one. And uh, you think that it is amazing. So we'll see if it is actually amazing. So on the last one, we say, uh, I like the special effects though. They were, and yes, indeed, here it would be, they were, oh, wait, they were amazing. So yeah, amazing. Ahora, vamos a revisar cómo suena todo el párrafo. Sería entonces, I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost $10. I was really shocked by the price. By mistake, I gave the cashier a $5 bill instead of a 10. I was a little disgusted. Then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was embarrassed. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was confused. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too annoying. I like the special effects though. They were amazing. Vaya, solo tenemos dos correctas. Sí, solamente hay dos correctas en todo esto. Ahora, si gustan les puedo leer cómo suena esto en español. Sí, dice, tuve una terrible experiencia en el cine. Primero, el ticket costó 10 dólares. Estaba sorprendido por el precio. Por error, le di un, a, a la cajera un billete de 5 dólares en lugar de uno de 10. Estaba un poco, eh, en este caso sería... Mmm, Disgusted es como asqueado. ¿sí? Les, uh -huh. Ajá, estaba como un poco asqueado, ¿sí? Ahora, uh, luego había mucha basura en todo el, el cine o todo el teatro. Eh, la, el, el desorden estaba apenado, ¿sí? La gente detrás de mí habló durante la película, lo que era confundido. La historia de la película, eh, o la historia, era difícil de seguir. Siempre encuentro las películas de terror un poco, o oh no, demasiado molestas. Me gusta, me gustaron en especial los efectos. O los, oh, me gustaron los efectos especiales. Me gustaron los efectos especiales. Um, eran increíbles, o estuvieron increíbles. Ahora, ¿cómo podríamos repararlo entonces? Si les, aquí las únicas que tenemos buenas serían shocked and amazing. ¿Cuál creen que podría sonar mejor acá? Someone else can help me, please. Embarrassed. Embarrassed. All right. So it will be embarrassed. Um, embarrassing or embarrassed? Um, I was a little, a little embarrassed. Embarrassed. Yeah, because this is the way I was feeling. I was a little embarrassed. Now. Uh, the theater was, so then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was? Disgusting. Disgusting, sí. Disgusting. O sea, que como que asqueroso, ¿verdad? Sí. El, el desorden era asqueroso. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was? Annoying. Annoying, exactamente, porque es molesto, sí, annoying. Es molesto que las personas estén hablando cuando están en el cine. Then, the story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too confusing. ¿Sí? 
En este caso sería too confusing, o sea, que son confusos. Los thrillers o las películas así de suspenso son confusas. So this is how it should sound. I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost $10. I was really shocked by the price. By mistake, I gave the cashier a $5 bill instead of a $10. I was a little embarrassed. Then there was trash all over the theater. The mess was disgusting. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was um, annoying. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too confusing. I liked the special effects, though. They were amazing. Okay, so in the meantime, I would like to have two people, two participants here that can read this paragraph. Así que dos personas para leer el párrafo, por favor. So we can have a little bit of a practice, a reading Bye. practice. Okay, Jonathan. And uh, one more person, Raúl. Okay, so Jonathan and Raúl. Jonathan, you may start whenever you feel ready. I'm ready. All right. I had a terrible time at the movies first. My tickets cost ten dollars i was really shocked by the price by mistake i gave the cashier a five dollars bill on zero of a ten i was a little embarrassed then there was trash all over the theater the mess was discarding the people behind me talked during the movie which was annoying the story was hard to follow i always find thrillers too confusing i liked i liked the special effects too they were amazing All right, very good. And now, Raul. Okay. Okay. I had a terrible time at the movies. First, my ticket cost ten dollars. I was really shocked by my price, by the price. By mistake, I gave the cashier a five dollar bill instead of a ten. I was a little embarrassed. Then, then there was trash all over the theater. The, the mess was disgusting. The people behind me talked during the movie, which was annoying. The story was hard to follow. I always find thrillers too confusing. I liked the special effects. Thought they were amazing. All right. Great. Very good. So, yeah. Um, aquí, esto. Esto de acá, esta muletilla, que básicamente funciona como una muletilla. Es como el dolor de cabeza más grande para los intérpretes. Más que todo aquellos que hacen interpretación en vivo o que están haciendo traducciones en vivo, si lo queremos llamar así. Eh, porque vaya, este cambia todo el significado de la oración anterior. O si no lo cambia, al menos hace que quedemos mal porque esto se debe mencionar en español al principio. Esa palabra de acá se pronuncia do. Sí, do. Este do significa básicamente algo igual o similar al aunque, ¿sí? Entonces aquí, si lo dijese en español, sería aunque me gustaron los efectos especiales, ¿sí? Entonces, ¿por qué el do es importante aquí en esta oración? Porque todo lo anterior, todo lo que se había mencionado al principio, son cosas negativas, o sea, él empieza contando su historia de cómo, ¿verdad?, se, o sea, se quedó choqueado porque valía 10 dólares la entrada, cómo luego se sintió mal porque solo le dio un BTA 5 en lugar de 9 días al cajero, cómo había un montón de basura en el, en el, en el, um, en el cine, perdón, eh, cómo las personas estaban hablando detrás de él mientras estaban en la película, cómo era difícil seguir la historia y cómo él encuentra todas las películas así de suspenso confusas. Pero este es un comentario positivo. Por lo tanto, sale de la, de la misma línea que veníamos siguiendo. Entonces, allí es donde entran eh, estas muletillas o esta utilización del do. Sí. Por ejemplo, si yo dijese, um, I don't like pupusas, but I can try them though. Sí. Eso es algo muy falso, porque a mí sí me encantan, pero, pero sí, ¿verdad? Sería un ejemplo. Que yo diga, no me gustan las pupusas. Aunque lo podría intentar en español, pero en inglés ese do queda hasta el final. But I could try them do. ¿Sí? ¿Nos podemos hacer una idea de que hacia, hacia ahí va la oración? Sí. El detalle es que a veces hay oraciones o comentarios que son bien largos y hasta el final de ese comentario se coloca ese do. Entonces ahí se complica bastante, ¿verdad? Porque el do se utilizará después de una oración que básicamente quiebre con los ejemplos que se venían dando. Los ejemplos que veníamos escuchando eran 
hacia algo positivo y este es negativo o viceversa, ¿verdad? Eran todos los ejemplos negativos y este es positivo. Entonces, um, wait, what did I say? I don't know. The thing is that, yeah, si eh, cambia con la dirección en la que venía el discurso, pues ahí es donde se va a utilizar el do. Ahora, eh, let's move on. Let's see the next thing. And it's basically the conversation about the new Halle Berry movie. Ooh, wait. So, yeah, we're going to read the conversation. And then right after, after that, we're going to go ahead and practice it. So, basically, that's going to be the wrap-up for tonight. Now, what's playing? That's the title for this conversation. What's playing? So in here, we have two people. We have Roger and we also have Carol as the two um, people taking part of the conversation. What do they say? Well, the conversation is supposed to go as following. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I heard it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Okay, so there you have it. It's pretty easy, right? I'm going to just read it once again so that we have clear how to pronounce Uh, most of the words. So, the Roger and Carol, once again, it should sound as following. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Hmm, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I heard it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? Hmm, I'm interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Okay, now, just one thing. Acá, si recuerdan lo que les he mencionado ya en un par de ocasiones, los linking sounds. Aquí, eh, esta oración o esta pregunta completa puede sonar... Eh, diferente utilizando linking sounds. En lugar de decir, what do you want to see? Podemos simplemente decir, what do you want to see? What do you want to see? ¿Ok? What do you want to see? Y de esa forma, para muchos pueda que suene, eh, digamos, irrespetuoso con el idioma, pero en realidad la mayoría de, 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 de personas que lo utilizan de forma nativa, lo dicen así. ¿Sí? What do you want to see? What do you want to do? What do you want to go? Entonces, eso es algo súper, súper común. Así que, si ustedes lo pueden pronunciar de esa forma, será mejor. So now, um, any questions about any of these words here, guys, that you would like to clarify before we go ahead and do the practice? All is clear for me. All right. So, if everything is clear, I will be opening the breakout rooms. Esta será la primera vez, creo, que vayamos a uno, así que ya recuerden, ¿verdad? Hacemos la captura o tomamos la fotito y la compartimos cuando estemos allá todos divididos. So, I will open the rooms now and we can start doing the practice.
I can I can be Roger. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to see a movie tonight? Um, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm interested in the new Holly Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Okay. Now I'm Roger and what wanna Carol? What wanna be a Carol? Can you you, you and Rodrigo Hernandez? Yeah, why not? Well, let's let's go. Do you want to see a movie tonight? But I don't like a new movie. Mm -hmm. Uh well, what do you want to see? I'm interested interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. Oh, that's fine with me. She's a beautiful actress. Okay. Did you see the conversation? Yes, I see. Yes. Okay. Okay. Fine. Colors. Okay. Who is missing? Uh, Blanca. Yes. Okay. I am Royer. Okay. Do you want to see me tonight? Uh, maybe. What's playing? How about the new James Bond film? I heard is really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based on Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinated, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? I'm east interested in the new Halle Berry movie. It looks good. That's fine with me. She's a wonderful actress. Okay. We can switch now, Evelyn, if you want to try with Edwin. And with ever. Yes. I royal. It's okay. I royal. Yes. Okay. Do you want to see a movie tonight? Mm, maybe. Let's play. How about the new James Bond film? I hear it's really exciting. Actually, the last one was boring. What about the movie based of Stephen King's new novel? I don't know. His books are usually fascinating, but I don't like horror movies. Well, what do you want to see? Um, interesting in the new Halle Berry movie. It's look good. That's fine with me. She's. So, once again, um, this time nobody said it, but I'm going to say it. Um, you did amazing. You did great, guys. Very, very good. Good job. So, um, just as a reminder, tomorrow we are going to have a class. So, I hope that, you know, the ones who have the chance to log in are going to be here. Because, yeah, we're going to be covering, uh, well, more importantly, the relative classes. Then, of course, um, some words regarding opinions or you know different ways in which you can offer your opinions or perspectives about different things um so yeah hopefully you know we're gonna be able to have a great class tomorrow and for tonight that is basically all that we had in storage so thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class and i hope i'll see you tomorrow again so bye-bye for now and see you tomorrow thank you bye, bye. you're very bye. welcome bye-bye then